In Northern California, a small community is shocked by a devastating inferno that consumes its local library. As firefighters fight to contain the blaze, distraught parents rush to try and locate their children. When the flames die down, 14 children are missing and presumed dead. Yet in the weeks that follow, skeletons from the rubble are discovered and identified, but not one belongs to any of the 14 missing children. Even stranger, months after the blaze, a strange photograph is delivered to the local police, showing a group of children, some identified as the missing children, playing with a freakishly tall, unidentified individual standing in their midst. The individual appears to be wearing a black suit, but has disproportionately long and slender limbs. The police immediately begin referencing the unknown figure as Slenderman. Seized by police evidence, the photo disappears until it finds its way online decades later to be met by hosts of people claiming to have seen the terrifying figure. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Infographics Show. Today we're taking a look at the horrifying story of Slenderman. Slenderman was originally created on June 10, 2009 as part of a Photoshop contest where users were challenged to create paranormal images using pre-existing photos. Forum poster Eric Knutson edited two black and white images of children to which he added a tall, thin figure in a black suit. To supplement his entries, Knutson also included pieces of text along with the photos, alleging them to be eyewitness testimony of the monster and its effects on people. Having planted the seeds of a great and very creepy story, the legend of Slenderman only grew, and more and more people began to add to the character's backstory. Slenderman's design is purposefully simple, taking the typical human body and distorting it just enough so it appears monstrous. The character has no face, and instead has a head with no facial features, eyes, nose, or ears, and is always seen wearing what appears to be a black suit and tie. His limbs are also extremely long, very disproportionate when compared to a normal person. He is also extremely tall, standing as tall as 7 feet, but sometimes even 8 feet with a very gaunt body, hence the name Slenderman. Knudsen commented that originally he was inspired by Zach Parsons' story The Insidious Beast and by Stephen King's The Mist, as well as reports from ghost hunters and eyewitnesses of shadow people, typically described as humanoid figures with no features that often appear in the background or distance. Shadow people have a startling similarity to the Slenderman character. Mothman in The Mad Gasser of Mattoon a figure blamed for several gas attacks in the US in the 1940s, and the massive paranoia they caused in real life also influenced Knudsen's imagination when creating the character. As Slenderman's popularity grew, so did his mythos, which was being added to daily by fans on various online forums. One of the earliest and best established pieces of Slenderman mythos was a folklore story set in 16th century Germany, where a character called Der Grossmann stalked a terrified village. This was supposed to be an original iteration of Slenderman, proving that the figure had been stalking humanity for centuries, possibly longer. Slenderman also inspired various YouTube video series though, with the most famous being Marble Hornets which tells the story of a film school student stumbling upon the character while shooting his first feature-length film project. Hitting well over 250,000 subscribers and 55 million views by 2013, Marble Hornets inspired other series to include Everyman Hybrid and Tribe 12. A video game developed by a computer design student named Slender, The Eight Pages, was revealed in 2012 and met with rave reviews. A very simplistic project, the game consisted of nothing more than a character with a limited life flashlight collecting eight pages of art scattered around a forest while being pursued by Slenderman. The more pages the character collects, the thicker the fog outside grows, and the faster Slenderman becomes. The game was such an unexpected indie smash hit that it would go on to inspire the creation of a sequel, Slender The Arrival One Year Later, which was released to mild but mostly positive reviews. In 2018, Sony Pictures released Slenderman, a feature-length movie featuring the titular character. Yet part of the mythos about Slenderman is a constant reference and real-world fear of the Tulpa effect. Taken from Buddhist ideology, the Tulpa effect simply states that if enough people believe something is real, then it can manifest as real in the world. Basically, our belief is what gives the world its substance. Because we believe water is wet, it is. And if enough of us stop believing that, then water will cease to be wet. 
As the popularity of Slenderman grew online, many people feared that a real-life Tulpa effect may eventually reach critical mass, giving birth to the very real and very terrifying entity that so far had only haunted the internet forums and YouTube videos. Horrifyingly, these people might have been right. In 2014, three 12-year-old girls had a sleepover, during which they found stories of the Slender Man online. Becoming engrossed with the myth, two of the girls, Anissa Weyer and Morgan Geyser, began to believe that Slender Man really existed and that the only way to prevent him from harming their families were to become his proxies. The concept of a proxy or a mortal under the influence of Slender Man had been a part of the growing mythos, and the two teens believed that only by becoming proxies themselves could they keep their loved ones safe. In order to do so, they lured their friend Peyton Leutner out into the forest for a game of hide-and-seek. Once far enough away from any prying eyes, Wire and Geisner pinned Leutner down to the ground and began to viciously stab her 19 times. She was stabbed in the arms, legs, and torso with a 5-inch kitchen knife, with two wounds directly to major organs, one missing her heart by a millimeter and another plunging through her diaphragm and cutting into her liver and stomach. Wire and Geyser then told the dying Leutner that they were going to go get help, but instead left her there to die. Incredibly, Leutner dragged herself to a nearby road where a passing cyclist found her and called for an ambulance. Wire and Geyser were apprehended shortly after and displayed guilt over the attack, but believed that it was necessary in order to appease the Slender Man. The two girls were sentenced to 25 years to life and 40 years to life, with forced and involuntary admission to a state psychiatric institute and mental health screening to last for decades. Both girls will have a chance to appeal their sentences, but only after a thorough psychological screening. If you thought that this was an isolated incident though, think again. In 2014, a 14-year-old girl in Florida set her house on fire after becoming obsessed with Slender Man, leaving her sleeping mother and 9-year-old brother inside. The girl had become obsessed with Slender Man online, but had also allegedly been upset at feeling bullied at home and at school. Her ultimate motives remain unknown. In Hamilton County, Ohio, a 13-year-old girl attacked her mother with a knife in 2014. The mother returned home from work and found her daughter in the kitchen with a knife, wearing a white mask over her face. Without warning, the girl viciously attacked her, though without causing serious injuries. She would later tell police that she was trying to please Slender Man, and entries in her personal journal would reference both Slender Man, killing, and demons. Thankfully since then, Slender Man-inspired incidents have stopped though curiously, they seem to have declined in line with the popularity of the character online. Even a major feature film just last year failed to truly resuscitate the decade-old mythological figure, though it remains worrying that at the height of its popularity, Slender Man was in fact inspiring real killing. Was the Tulpa effect at play? Did enough people really begin to believe in Slender Man so as to allow the fictitious being to achieve a critical mass that let it step from the world of make-believe into our reality? It's curious that the attacks were all carried out by young teens who all wanted to please Slender Man, frighteningly similar to the power so often ascribed to the creature, namely those to influence and manipulate children to do his will.